Mind if I just borrow your eye here? Thank you. Now that I'm playing through some more custom maps, I've seen quite a few keycards and keycard reader mechanics. I decided to see how these are built and how you might customize them a bit. So I'll start with building a wall and tossing a door frame from the models menu into that wall. Then I'm going to realize that I can't think of a quick way to cut out a door size hole in this wall. So bear with me while I rejig this and get a doorway. All right, now add some nice materials to this wall and voila, we have a doorway. Next, let's add the door. I'm gonna grab a metal door and even though I drag the door and drop it into the doorway, it doesn't look like it has a handle. Don't worry about that, the handle comes in later. Now that the door is in the right place, I'm gonna change its class to the prop door rotating physics. I'll give it a reasonable name so I can refer to it throughout the rest of the map, so the door A, for example. And there are a lot of options to play with, but here I'm just going to go to the spawn flags and I'm going to make sure it spawns locked. Next we're going to make the keycard reader, which is just going to be a prop dynamic. Now I'm going to change the model to keycard reader and we're going to see later that this doesn't really matter. You can use almost anything to act as a keycard reader. The keycard reader model is really just for show. I'm going to put a trigger multiple entity in front of the key reader and that's what's going to be responsible for sending the signals to unlock the door. You line up the trigger multiple about where you want the player to pass the card in order to trigger the door unlock. Now this is important, instead of having it triggered by clients, so like the player walking through the trigger or touching the trigger, we're going to trigger it with a physical object, so something you hold in front of the keycard reader to trigger the unlock. To help wire this together, I'm going to use a filter activator name. I'm going to name it filter A. I'm using that A at the end of the names to kind of link all these things together so I know they're involved in something specific like unlocking the door. The idea here is we can have a filter name which identifies a set of entities in the map. So anything that matches that filter can activate something. So in this case, on pass is going to unlock the door and the activator filter works out what things can be used in the on pass action. You can also add an effect so that when the object passes the keycard reader, the light is going to turn green and we're just going to change the skin using the parameter of 1 on the keycard reader to get it to change from red to green. Here's where we link the trigger multiple with the on filter. So on start touch when the object we're going to use to pass in front of the keycard reader touches this trigger space, we use the test activator input to then fire those two other actions, which is unlock the door and change the keycard reader from red to green. Now let's just add in a keycard, and that's pretty straightforward. I'm going to use a prop physics, change the model to keycard, and set the name to key A. Okay, let's test this out. There's the key card on the ground, walking over to the door. As soon as a key card touches that multiple trigger, the key card rear turns green and the door is unlocked.
The key card is just a prop physics with the name key A. What would happen if I take a head crab and try and use it as a key card? I'll set the name to key A so it matches the activator filter. Next, I'm gonna make this head crab spawn as a ragdoll. In this scene, both the key card and the head crab can unlock the door. Well, would you look at that, a key card reader. What should I place in front of that key card reader? How about a head crab? Once you realize the keycard and the keycard reader are just props, you could use anything to open the door. So let's try a combine soldier. We'll do the same thing we do with the head crab. We'll set him to a rag doll, set his name to key A, and make him an officer because, you know, officers have more access. There's one other thing I'm going to do which is a bit of a quality of life thing. You know when you pick up bodies, they tend to stay in a place, you can't really drag a body in Half-Life Alex. You can change that by setting a variable within the vConsole. So I'm going to build the map, launch up vConsole, and I'm going to copy and paste this specific command which is going to tell Half-Life Alex not to pin the bodies to the ground so you can drag around the humanoid bodies. So the door is clearly locked to begin with, just like before. Now I'm going to take this body, move it over the keycard reader, and see if it unlocks. Still not exactly straightforward moving the body, so I'm just going to kind of throw him instead. Success! Now the next step is to just take the keycard reader out and replace it with something that makes a little more sense if you're going to pull a body and unlock a door with a body. I found an eyepiece in the models from the Combine Soldier, so I'm going to use that to build a very basic biometric scanner. You could do a lot more with this, and I spent way too much time just trying to get this to fit properly, but that's the simple idea. You can get creative, and you can build scenes in your maps that involve taking Combine Soldiers and having to get them to unlock doors for you, just like in a movie. Now this is pretty quick and dirty, just reusing some existing models, but you can use your imagination and build something really convincing that looks like a keycard reader if you wanted to. So there you have it. You can imagine a map where there's a keycard reader on the wall, you have to have just killed an officer or a combine soldier, and you can drag his head over, put it near the keycard reader, or near the biometric reader in this case, and unlock a door. It could make for some interesting storylines as opposed to the standard find a key card of a certain color. Thank you for watching and I hope you found that helpful. If you're enjoying these tutorials, consider subscribing. If you're already subscribed, thank you for your support. Feel free to comment below with suggestions for custom maps I should play or future tutorials I should make. Looking forward to seeing what you create in VR.